day 29 and we're going to start by showing you all the secrets of the print function that we haven't shown you so far. Now you might be thinking, hold on, hold on, I, I, can, I can do printing, I can do printing really well. I've been doing it, in fact, since 120 seconds into lesson one. What are you talking about? Well, there are a few little things that we can do to print to make our life a bit easier and to make everything else we're going to be doing over the next chunk of work much, much simpler. And that's because every time you've put a comma into a print statement, you haven't actually been using it as glue. You've been using it as a separate argument. Now you know a little bit about what a subroutine is, you'll know that arguments are different things that we tell the print statement to actually do. One of these things that we can tell the print statement to do is what to do at the end. By default, what print does at the end of every print is press enter. You can see that in this for loop. When I click run, it puts a new number on each line. And that might not be what you're looking for. A secret second argument to the print statement, accessed by putting in a comma, is the end command. Now, whatever you put in your quotes here is what the computer is going to do after each number. So let's try a space. Ah, now you see what it's done is it's put out all the numbers with a space at the end instead of a new line. And that becomes really useful because in this case, what I could do is put a comma and a space and I look like I've made a list. Now the way we tell the computer to do a new line or press enter is with backslash n. That has the same effect as before. Backslash is a command character when paired with letters does certain things in the console. Slash n creates a new line, but there are others. Slash t creates a tab indent. You end up with a series of outputs that are lined up a little bit better. We've also got slash V, which is a vertical tab. So you end up with this sort of waterfall effect of everything moving down and slightly to the right as you go. Of course, one of the most useful things is to leave the gap out entirely. And you might be thinking, well, where can I use this? What's the point so far? When we were changing colors, it was actually quite difficult to write a bunch of code to change that. Now we know this first secret of print, we could actually write a subroutine to change something into a color for us, output it, and turn the color back. I'm not gonna write that subroutine for you just yet. In this batch of code, you'll see that whenever I'm changing the color, I'm using that end controller to make sure that it doesn't put in a return line whenever we want that. This means that I can turn the colors on and off and change them in a more effective way. Because I'm just saying change the color from this point and not change the color from this point and put in another enter. But what if I do a big concatenation of that? Let's give it a go. So this is that same program. But instead of putting every instruction on a different line, I've concatenated them with that comma symbol. And if I click run now, well, I am getting it all as a single sentence and it hasn't put a new line at the end, which is why you see the Replit logo glued to the end of my sentence. But you might notice there's a load of double spaces everywhere. Something weird is going on with this. And that's where I can show you the second trick of print. And that is, sep is short for separator. It is what's going to go between the concatenated elements. And in particular this time, what's going to go between the commas. Now, of course, we've said nothing here, so we've lost spaces altogether. So we do need to go in and put a few spaces in where we want them to appear in the manual code, but it means that we're not gonna get random spaces in those color changing elements of code. So now we've got an entire sentence that looks good, hasn't got a lot of random spaces between it and gives us full control of what we're doing. Of course, in any of these little tweaks, you can change the separator or the end value for something else, even random text or emoji, which helps you build out exactly what you want.
I know what you're thinking. Hold on, David, you mug. What are you thinking? You've already shown us how to print things out and delete the other stuff on the screen. The OS library, we talked about it a few lessons ago. You are a Muppet. Well, there was a problem with that, which you might have noticed when we actually did it. I've written the code again here, and let's run it. Do you notice how difficult that is to read? It's running through numbers very, very fast, but there is something going on. And I know you're thinking, well, that's what the time library was for, wasn't it? Let's bring time in. Let's do time.sleep and pause it for 0.5 of a second before we clear it. And that's going slow, but there is something still on the screen that you're probably ignoring that is really, really annoying. And that is that big white box. What is that? That's called the cursor. That's the position of the text cursor in the screen. We don't really want to see that if we're updating the screen. Occasionally, it'll update slowly and look like it's flicking around. If we speed that up a little bit, the flickering can be quite annoying. And if we take it down completely, the flickering gets to be a pain in the backside. So how do we turn that cursor off? Once again, it is just a sneaky print command. And we're going to add it to the start. This print command, all it does is turn the cursor off. So you can see now there's no white box appearing. No matter what I set that to, it is not going to appear in the console and my user interface is going to look better as a result. What if you want to turn it back on? Well, there's a command to turn it back on as well. I could print all that out and after the loop, turn it back on. So it's off, it's printing through every number and it turns it back on right at the end as we can see it popping up there so that the next person to type commands in can see what's going on. So three key things there. We can change the end, we can change the separator, and we can turn the cursor on and off if we need to. Your challenge for today is you're going to write a subroutine that takes in as an argument a color and some text. And all it will do is print out the text in that color and turn the color back to normal once it's finished. The important thing about this is that you should be able to use that exactly the same as a normal print statement. You need to control the ends and the separators so that it doesn't put a load of random enters all over the shop or a load of random symbols when you're trying to use it to output a sentence. You should then be able to output things in color simply by doing this. Don't forget to publish it in our community or share it on social media with the hashtag replit 100 days of code and see just what people think of your ability to make that print statement do whatever you want. Now that we've mastered that print statement, tomorrow we're going to look at a different way of outputting variables and text with a bit more control called f-strings. Yeah, f-strings. Good naming convention, guys. Thank you.